So we ready to have this conversation or not? Trey Lance, five interceptions. Now, I didn't talk about it the day of because I was celebrating my daughter's birthday party, but damn it, we damn sure gonna be here to talk about it today. Trey Lance is not who y'all think he is. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this portion of the video very, very quickly. Trey Lance should not and does not realistically have any bearing on the future or present of the Dallas Cowboys. There's nothing that Cowboys fans should be looking at this man and thinking that in any way, he should be a part of our future because by all metrics, you would be much better off preparing for the next phase of Cowboyhood with a brand new fresh face rookie that essentially is gonna be coming into the league with probably more experience than even Trey Lance has to this day in his career. Week one of the NFL season is upon us and now is the best time to join BetUS, America's favorite sports book, to bet on this upcoming NFL season. And what better way to start than with a week one parlay? Whether you wanna do over-unders, point spreads, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you wanna do on BetUS. Bet how you wanna bet in whatever way you wanna bet. Experience some of the fastest payouts in the industry and take advantage of 125% first time deposit bonus by using my link in the description below. So don't miss out on your chance to put some extra change in your pocket while doing the thing that you love, cheering on your favorite team. Now, without further ado, let's get back into the video. And shout out to our sponsors, BetUS. And nobody should be surprised. Trey Lance has not played enough football. And an NFL team is not the place where a guy actually learns how to play the game. You refine your skills in the NFL, but you should already have something to work with. Trey Lance has raw skills. He has raw athleticism. He can run fast. That's it, y'all. That's it. That's all he giving you. In high school, he barely played. He played as a junior. He played as a senior. As a junior, he played one game. As a senior, he played eight games. So his high school career was nine games as a quarterback playing serious football. Then you go to college, to North Dakota State University. And what we're looking at here is a schedule that consists of Butler, North Dakota, Delaware, UC Davis, Illinois State, Northern Iowa, Missouri State, South Dakota State, Youngstown State, Western Illinois, South Dakota again, Southern Illinois, Nichols, Illinois State, Montana State, James Madison. You're looking at a guy through his career in college who played a total of 19 games in college. So you add 19 plus nine, he played 28 games as a quarterback, period, on like a competitive level of football. That's it, y'all, 28 games. There's dudes that have played more than that by their junior year in high school. He done played 28 games. What, where, and why is everyone so invested into Trey Lance and what he can become to the point where you got guys like Robert Griffin trying to make excuses for throwing five interceptions against third and fourth stringers. And you're not a fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round pick. You're a third overall pick, man. This is what I'm talking about. Let it go. Let it go. Trey Lance has nothing to do with the Cowboys' future. This game right here, if it did anything else, it should have made everybody that had this foolishness to say, they should have made everybody delete their accounts. If at any time you thought that Trey Lance should be the predecessor of Dak Prescott or he should be putting Dak's job at danger, delete your accounts. People are tired of entertaining, hearing, and talking to ignorant ass Cowboys fans that don't know what they're looking at. They only look at the quarterbacks on the field. They have no clue how game plan strategy, the different nuances, they have no clue what they're looking at. And all they can do is regurgitate the low IQ points made on national television by the national TV talking Muppets. And now you got a bunch of mindless Muppets running around saying the same stuff. And it's stupid. And people's heads and brains are hurting. People are tired of hearing about Trey Lance. As a Cowboys fan, I'm done 
talking about Trey Lance. I'm glad the preseason is over because I'm done talking about it. I don't want to hear nothing about Trey Lance anymore. We will be lucky if anybody give us a bag of hot Cheetos and an Arizona tea for him at this point after throwing five interceptions. Do you know how hard it is to throw five interceptions in a game? Preseason or not, I don't care about the other stats that he piled up in the game. You threw five interceptions. There's nothing you can do to make that a redeemable performance. Forget all the, oh, give him some time. Oh, he just needs to play. The NFL is not where you get your experience actually playing the sport that you made it to a professional league to play. What are we talking about, y'all? He's a fifth-year player. This is not a rookie. This is not a guy that's a second or third. He's a fifth-year player. He would be going onto his second actual contract. He is going to be going to the second actual contract. What are we talking about? Let's stop it with the Trey Lance stuff. Let's move on. This is my last time talking about Trey Lance. That performance was the nail in the coffin for Trey Lance on this channel. Point blank period, bro. Point blank period. Now, moving on to some things that are actually important. Deuce Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen. Deuce Vaughn, to me, has absolutely secured the running back three position for me. I know we got Royce Freeman, but I thought about it and I was like, hey, we got Zeke here already. Zeke and Royce Freeman are essentially going to be giving you the similar running style or similar thing in the running game. Zeke ain't no punk. Zeke know how to lean forward. He can be a heavy body on people. He can use that gigantic head to head butt lining out the way and lean forward. We don't need Royce Freeman to do that. Deuce Vaughn, by and large, has looked like our best running back in preseason. And to me, I think that he not only secured a position on his roster, but I think that he may have moved up the depth chart with just how he's performed so far in the preseason. For a reference, even though I do not believe PFF is the end all be all, because I do, I have issues with how they grade things at times. But I, in this case, I can understand how they graded Deuce Vaughn because if you look at what he does with the opportunities he's given, Deuce is making the most out of it. He's displaying great vision, great feel. He's making timely cuts. He's being intentional with how he's running. He's doing a good job of following his blocks until he can't, and he's improvising. I really, really like what I'm seeing out of Deuce Vaughn and how he's running the ball. Now, the same similar thing had kind of happened last preseason, and he just disappeared in the regular season. Hopefully, the Cowboys see, just like I saw, that this is a, a reoccurring theme now. Anytime this dude is actually given a fair shot, he's an absolute difference maker, and he has home run hit capability. If you look at all the other running backs on our roster, there's only one guy that has home run hitting capability, and it's Deuce Vaughn, y'all. It's Deuce Vaughn, unless you want to make Trey Lance one of our running backs. That, that may be a better future option for him to be in a quarterback for this team. But Deuce Vaughn, uh, kudos to him. He's made me a believer. He's made me want to see the Cowboys feature him more prominently on the offensive side of the ball and not just as a gadget guy, as a toy that you throw out there and throw a weird, wonky-ass play out there with, but actually using him as a running back and letting him use his ability as a running back to be another playmaker on the field for us because, again, Zeke doesn't have home run hitting capability anymore. Royce Freeman is not a home run hitter. Rico Dowdle is like... He's kind of like a Tony Pollard type of back where he's maybe best served as a secondary back and maybe not necessarily as your lead guy. But Deuce Vaughn, to me, is the home run hitter. He's that change of pace back that can come in, and if he gets a little bit of breathing room, he can take it yard. So I really, really like what I saw from Deuce Vaughn as far as the running backs go. He has definitely stood out to me the most in this entire preseason. The receivers, John Stevens Jr., I predicted that he would be our third tight end. I think that he is going to take the position of Peyton Hendershot, and I think that he did himself some favors with his performance against the Chargers. I think John Stevens Jr. is definitely someone who stands out as someone who has some capability of being a positive playmaker for this team. Ryan Flanoy continues to impress. Anytime Ryan Flanoy is out there, he looks like a pro. And, and, and sometimes you can just look at receivers and you can see that they look like a pro. And to me, I'm going to start calling Ryan Flanoy baby Dez because that's kind of what he looks like to me. It's like a baby version of a Dez Bryant, right? And then if we go to the defensive side of the ball, the run defense. The run defense finally showed some cracks. This was the first preseason game that the Cowboys defense didn't really look up to the task. Now, we have to keep in mind that there was essentially no starters playing and there was a bunch of third and fourth string guys and guys that are like really, really trying to make this roster. 
a bunch of those guys were playing. So I don't really look at the defensive performance and, and take anything positive or negative from what happened there. We did let the guys score a little bit more than we would have. One thing that's definitely negative that I've noticed is Andrew Booth is indeed burnt toast, ladies and gentlemen. That man is a liability on the field. And if Mike Zimmer and Al Harris can't figure out how to minimize the damage that he's capable of allowing on his side of the field, um, especially when it comes to deep balls. And it seems like anytime he's playing that soft coverage, he gets eaten up. He gets eaten alive on those deep routes. And he just can't keep up with guys. And he gets out of his back pedal a little bit too slowly. And at that point, the receiver's already running past him at full speed. And he's trying to just now accelerate. And it's over from there. And he got burnt, bro. He got burnt really, really badly by Simi Fajoko. So Andrew Booth Jr., we're starting to see some of those, some of those warts that he kind of displayed in Minnesota that made the Minnesota fans kind of breathe a sigh of relief when he was finally traded from the team in exchange for our project guy, right? But I really, really, I think my big takeaway from this game, just in general, I love Deuce Vaughn as a running back. I want to see them use him a lot more. Trey Lance does not need to be anywhere near the idea of the future of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, obviously, we're going to jump into a little bit of film this week. Um, I think we got like 11 days before the season starts. We are going to look at some film and stay tuned with the news. Obviously, the Deron Bland news hit yesterday. I'm going to have a video kind of talking about that, giving you guys my thoughts on that and just telling everybody to R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Either way, we steal. The same old cowboys. And again, shout out to our sponsor of this video, Bet US. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still the boys. Hey, hey! Woo, portion of my portion. Hey, I'm still the boys.